Do you know what a sexual divorce is? Have you heard the term? I was actually looking for some research on the matter and could not find anything. So I am inducting this term into the dictionary. There are laws about sex and divorce, scholarly articles about lack of sex and intimacy and divorce, sexless marriage, etc. But the term sex divorce is nowhere to be found. So let me introduce you to the term and concept of a sexual divorce and let's navigate this bumpy landscape together. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am Dr. Tanji, the sex doctor, board certified clinical sexologist, and your most trusted and fun sex expert on this platform. I started this channel as a safe space for us to share and learn everything there is to know about human sexuality and sexual health. And I invite you to stick around by subscribing and hitting that notifications button your subscription makes it possible for this sex positive community to continue to grow and reach more people who would like to find an outlet for positive and healthy sexual exploration and growth. I welcome your respectful comments and questions, so leave them below. You can also become part of the Sex Curious and Sex Intelligent Clubs so you can have access to exclusive content not available here. Are you subscribing? Thanks. Now back to a sexual divorce. Many of us have been there, a sexless marriage. Although many don't get married thinking that the flaring passion of the courtship will end, the truth is that many couples find themselves falling into patterns of not having sex for a myriad of reasons. A sexless marriage can be the result of changing family roles and dynamics, added stressors and responsibilities to each individual or to the family unit, conflict, tension, and resentment among the couple, physical or mental illness and medications to treat these, changing bodies that lead to body image issues, limitations in movement, chronic pain or sexual dysfunction, or something as simple but not unimportant as mismatched libidos, to name a few. And sometimes the causes for sexlessness can be not as obvious or not easily discussed. Diminished connection, loss of love, respect, lust, or attraction for the other person. We should be able to normalize these conversations so that we can all be in the know and at least deal with the reality and the available options and not go about life trying to guess what's wrong. One of the things that I see the most in my practice is people trying to guess what the problem is and why they're not having the sex they want and partners who are not forthcoming with the information or people who do not express their needs and wants clearly and assume that the other person knows or should know how the sexlessness makes them feel. I don't practice or advocate for mind reading. Words matter and so far, they're the best method of communication we have, so arm yourself with courage and prepare to discuss the top topics with your partner. Only from the pain of the hard conversation is that we can all grow. Avoiding the touchy subjects may preserve the status quo, but it does not fix the problems and certainly does not make relationships better. If both partners are okay with being sexless, then there's nothing to fix. Remember that we all have our own normal and whatever works for you is totally okay. But if one or both partners become frustrated or hurt by the loss of physical intimacy and sex, this may be a signal of a problem that needs to be addressed. I hear it very often in my practice. My spouse is attractive, great parent. We have fun together. We have a great life. We do things together. We share the same interests and values. We hug kiss, say I love you often, we travel, love the family we have raised, love each other, sleep together, and love the life that we share. We just don't have sex. With this scenario, many see a multitude of reasons to stay in the relationship and not undo it just because the sex is infrequent, unfulfilling, or lacking altogether. In this case, I propose a sex divorce. How do you negotiate a sex divorce? For those who are happy with everything else in the relationship, but unhappy about the sex, 
and you have explored all alternatives and there is no solution or you're not willing to seek or implement the solution for the sexlessness, again, given that all else is golden, here is some guidance to negotiate a sex divorce. Talk openly and with brutal honesty about each other's needs and wants. Each partner has to be ready to listen and hear the other person and be equipped with the right language to communicate assertively with their partner. Frankness is absolutely necessary and although not easy, it will yield the best outcomes, one in which at least there is transparency. Take sex off the table. I am a sexologist, so I love sex. But if sex becomes an issue and a point of contention in an otherwise fruitful relationship, and there is reluctance to fix the issue, take sex out of the menu, make that choice. Your choice is your power. And although you may not like this idea because it feels like giving up, what you are already doing is clearly not working and dealing with the disappointment and frustration day in and day out erodes the relationship even further. Explore your options. Are you going to commit to celibacy after the sexual divorce? Will you only enjoy masturbation from now on? Are you willing to open the relationship so you or your partner can have other sexual partners? These are all realistic and possible scenarios with pros and cons that you should weigh in very carefully. Communicate with your partner. Whatever your course of action will be after the sex divorce, let your partner in the know. Hard as it may be or sound, be clear and honest. If sex is not an option and the other person would like to continue to be sexual, they have every right to. Cultivate intimacy even in the absence of sex. Kissing, hugging, spooning, sensual massage, bathing together, expressing love through acts of service, etc. In a relationship that is still connected are great ways to get emotional satisfaction and even physical satisfaction. Revise as needed. If you find that the sex divorce should come to an end after a period of time or the conditions of the sex divorce need to change, Go back to the drawing board. I have heard of all kinds of arrangements that work to help people stay married but still feel fulfilled sexually. Seek professional help. If you find yourself confused, angry, or sad over the possibility of a sex divorce or would like to go back to having sex in the marriage and something is preventing that, talk to a professional, whether it be a healthcare provider or a therapist who can help with the underlying issues and guide you to reinsert sex into your relationship. Again, these guidelines are for people who have decided that the relationship is too great to end over the issue of sexlessness, but one of them is still longing for sexual excitement. And to be clear, there are a few things that I don't advocate for. Number one, deceit. You do you, and I don't judge, based on personal and professional experience though, Honesty is hard, but better in the end. Number two, faking it. I don't believe that sex is mandatory or a marital duty. If that's your belief, you do you, but it is not mine. And I would not advise anyone in my practice to just go and have sex in spite of lack of desire, pain, or discomfort. If someone does not want to have sex for whatever reason, they should be able to say so and have their boundaries respected. Number three, that Everyone in a sexless marriage should open up their relationship. Being in an open relationship requires a level of logistics, sophisticated communication, emotional intelligence, trust, and confidence, maturity to make it work. Open relationships can be hard and they're not for everyone. Number four, an actual divorce. Divorcing a partner for the sole reason of sexlessness is a personal decision. I have heard it in my practice throughout the years, and that is your choice. I would never say that if you're not getting sex at home, ditch the relationship altogether. Divorcing or divesting from the relationship is a personal decision that only the people involved can make. Number five, manipulating your partner into having sex with you. Anything that it is not an authentic and a clear choice for all parties involved should never be okay. So there you have it. That's a sexual divorce. If you are in this position, tell me in the comments below, how do you navigate sexlessness when the relationship is actually great otherwise? This is Dr. Tanji, the sex doctor. See you next time.